Hello, this is Telford Thomas of Thomas Computers, and I just want to inform the community of the latest and greatest scam out there. If uh, anything pops up on your computer informing you to call someone, uh, please don't call that number because those are the hackers. Uh, they have charges and fees up to $275 or, or more, and so you don't want to get caught up in that. Uh, the best advice uh, I can give you is to turn your computer off and come see me at Thomas Computers. Yo, what up? This is DJ Chip, and you are watching New Way to Live Network. Bam. In terms of why this government was constituted in the first place, this is a government of the people, by the people, for the people, and in the Republic, we must remember the highest office of the land is not the president, it is citizens. And so we have to engage uh, our problems and confront them, search for the common good. That's what we talked about at the 107th Convention, and that's what I hope we will talk about tonight. In conclusion, I clearly understand that I'm mean, just back from a march in Atlanta where we had 10 to 15,000 people in the street. There have been marches in 18 cities across Georgia. I clearly understand we're at crossroads when it comes to policing. But we should not pretend or act as if this is a new problem. My first visit to Columbus uh, as, a, as an activist with NWSU back in 2003, and it was in the wake of the killing of Kenneth B. Walker. Uh, I shall never forget that December 11th at night, I received a call about 11.30 that an unarmed African-American male had been killed by 258 earlier that evening near Inglewood Road. I remember coming and speaking with his mother, Cheryl, our uh, enemy, his wife, Cheryl, his daughter, talking to them about the pain. Ten years later, in 2014, uh, we see Trayvon Martin slain on the street. And then we have followed that with two and a half years of a series of cases captured on video by the police, by the bystanders, by the nearby security cameras, documenting our inability to deal with race. And the fact that we put police officers, some who are poorly trained and underpaid, from the lowest paid public service that we have, we put them on the front lines to manage our failures on the war on drugs, failures on the war on poverty, failures on the war on the education system that educates all of our children, our failure to have sustainable economy and work, not just for the top wage journalists, but also work for the working class and the middle class. And we tell police officers to go out and man those front lines. It's not right, it's not fair. I believe that new lives matter as well, and if it really matters to people, we do more than give lip service to law enforcement support. We give them training that they need. We give them support that they need. We will deal with race and all the other social terms and get on the business of making this a more perfect. I'm a volunteer here at the Liberty Theater. Uh, we have many, many programs for children. Uh, I'm going to highlight just one for you this afternoon, and that's the performance choir. This is a group of children who come together every Monday night for one hour to sing. We have an instructor, uh, a well-trained uh, music director who comes, teaches the children the songs. They all get lead parts, and I love watching them grow in confidence and, and in being so brave to go before a group, and they just learn so many things. Right now, we have about 15 students. Our goal by Christmas is to have 50 students. The cost is nominal. We pay $15 a month, and that money goes to pay the instructor. So I hope you'll come out on Mondays and uh, bring your children just for a trial to see if they like it. And I guarantee you they will, and I guarantee you that this will serve them so well in the future. Hope to see you here. Take care. Hello, this is Cedric Mitchell, and watch me on Tax Tips right here on New Way to Live.
Did you know that in today's society, your credit score is like a vital sign in the hospital? It's being monitored at all times. If not by you, certainly someone else is monitoring your credit. It can have various impacts over your life. It can impact your insurance premiums as well as your interest rates. You can be denied the ability to rent a home purchase a car, get a credit card, or even more, you can be denied employment. Did you know that over the course of your lifetime, less than an excellent credit rating could cost you over $150,000? 20% of credit reports have errors on them causing lower credit scores. But did you know this? The Fair Credit Reporting Act 
gives all Americans, including you, the right to dispute and or investigate any item on their credit report. Inaccurate, erroneous, or obsolete items such as late payments, charge-offs, foreclosures, judgments, repossessions, bankruptcies, tax liens, collections, short sales, medical bills, and many other items can be removed from your credit file or can be updated to reflect paid as agreed. Hey, you don't have a minute to waste. Call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, that's 706-366-5520. Let's get started increasing your credit score. Hello, my name is Sylvester Jenkins, pastor of Paso Ministries, and you're watching The Way to Live. Join us on this broadcast as we talk about life skills. God bless you.
Any police shooting is investigated by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation. That's something that some communities are just determining might be a good idea in the future. We've been doing that for years. We give a psychological evaluation to every single candidate who attempts to become a police officer. Only 20% even get the right and privilege to hold a gun and badge because we take it that seriously. You all know we've received a lot of criticism for the vacancies we have on this police department. We can fill them all tomorrow. We have that in the applications, but we're not going to give a lot of those people done in the back. Because we take it seriously, very seriously. And yes, they have oversight. We have, we have not only our officers of uh, our Office of Professional Standards who do investigate and look into and archive every single complaint that comes in to them, but you have an appeal to this elected civilian to our council elected civilians, to our court system, and to our public safety advisory committee, who all can look through that. So we, we have done a lot of good in these years, but we're ready to talk about what more needs to be done, including uh, not just policing, um, but equity. Uh, Francis talked a little bit about some of the, the continuing uh, disparities we have. In, in our communities. And yes, I think there's a lot to be said for the economic segregation we have and for the racial components that overlay that. And there are things we can do, programs and policies and economic strategies that we can employ, absolutely. Let's not paint with such a broad brush that we say that those intrinsic societal things that have, have laid sometimes latent for generations, that we still need to stamp out and we still need to move beyond Cover everything. Because I, I've got to say, we have to realize that good has been done and that there is a civil respect and order, at least in this community and I believe in this country. And so let's continue the conversation tonight. Let's continue about uh, the school to prison pipeline conversations we've been having in this community, the jail reform that we've done, uh, the community policing activities we have put in place. Um, the steps we have taken for redevelopment districts and so many other things. Let's continue those conversations, but let's not lose sight uh, of the pain our citizens are feeling, uh, but also the progress we've made. And I want to leave with one last analogy. One last analogy before we get on uh, to the conversation. Uh, you know, a lot of people are here tonight and, and they hear uh, some of what Francis has said, some of what our neighbors have said. And, they say, why do black lives matter, all lives matter? I'm going to leave you with this analogy. If your spouse came up to you and said, do you love me? You need to stop a minute and say, why does my spouse feel the need to ask me? I love them. And then if your response to that question is, all married people love married people, I think y'all need a little bit of counsel, a little bit of help. Okay? And so we've got to hear one another. Our fellow citizens have asked us, do black lives matter? The answer is that you bet black lives matter. I think maybe too much, too many of us heard it as do black lives matter more. They've asked if black lives matter. It's a serious question. You have to ask why they asked it, and we have to think seriously about it. Hello, I'm Cedric Mitchell, and today we're going to talk about getting an estimate during tax time. You definitely want to get an estimate during tax time. It's very important to shop around, but it's also very important to keep your identity and your secure information safe. When doing an estimate with any tax company, you do not need your full social, your full date of birth, or any of your pertinent information as with your employer. So feel free to get an estimate, but make sure you shop around safely. Um, the year of birth, Social Security card, is, Social Security is not required, so be careful when getting Social Security cards and W-2s. There are many tax offices out here that are legitimate, but there are also many that are not. And what they will do is e-file your return as soon as you leave, even though you haven't signed any documentation. A lot of people don't know that the IRS will only take a Social Security number for you or a dependent once. So be careful when you shop around and be safe. Hello, everybody. This is Johnny Newsom with Financial Solution and associates and you're tuned into New Wave to Live Network. Yeah. 
My name is Felicia L. Hamilton, and you're watching New Way to Live TV. Good job. Oftentimes, we have these uh, episodes like Dallas, Minnesota, that there's a rush to have conversation and a need for uh, reconciliation in that conversation. We cannot have reconciliation unless it is preceded with truth. It's truth and reconciliation. And when we talk about police, we, we want to divorce the truth of how the police were even born. In the North, the police during the 18th century uh, were largely private or volunteer operations, private operations to protect the production mills and the like, uh, the means of production of the, of the capitalists, private and volunteer. Uh, in the South, the law enforcement was largely slave patrols. So we want to talk about the uh, first pillar of the president's uh, recommendation of the 21st century police to deal with building trust and legitimacy. And go back to the root of how police developed in this country. In the South, there were slave patrols. Hey, you catch slaves and return those bodies to involuntary servitude. In the North, they were largely designed to protect capitalist venture and their means of production, as well as to control labor in the North. That's how police were formed. And that's the origin of the first police departments. Thank you. In 1838, in Boston and other places, the one that's had a very police department as well, tried to professionalize that. But again, those police departments largely in the South enforced the black codes that kept African Americans from being able to enjoy the richness of their citizenship. We talk about 240 years of this republic, this experiment in the mayor framework. Well, it's only been 48 years for black folks in the South to be able to cast them down. So it should have been like this in 240 years. We've been pulled in the first place. We get to the police departments that are largely enforced Jim Crow laws and black folks. If you really want to build trust and legitimacy, we have to speak honestly about that. That the same folks who protected the lynchers were the same folks who enforced the, uh, the, the black codes and prevented folks from being able to cast 
cast them out. And that liberation is not a something that happened 400 years ago. That is something that my grandfather tells me about and that my mother remembers. And that I remember when even celebrating Dr. King was a protest. And we protested as kids by staying out of school because it was a failure to recognize that as an important apology. Peace and prosperity to you. I'm Dr. J. Aline Hood, the host and executive producer of Dr. Hood's Visions. You're watching New Way to Live Network. Hello, my name is Juan Lane, and thank you for tuning in to this station, New Way to Live. Listen, we can't do it without your help. We need you to send your donations in today. This is how this station operates, and we're trying to do the very best for you and your family with the production that we have, we are really giving it our all, but we cannot continue it without your financial support. So please, send your offerings in to P.O. Box 3615, Columbus, Georgia, 363193, in, in care of, of New Way to Live, and we'll make sure that we get it on so we can keep this great program going. If you and your family are enjoying it, we pray that you continue to, to, to we pray that you send us a, a, a offering that we can continue and, and, and do the very best for you. Um, also, make sure that you watch our uh, public education program. This is a very special program where it can help you prepare for your next test. The public education program right here on New Way to Live. Thank you. Did you know that the majority of people have no will, trust, or power of attorney? What will happen to your children, property, or other assets? If you can't make decisions for yourself, who will know your wishes? Will the appropriate people know where to find all of your personal and financial documentations and information? Well. We have a program developed by attorneys to complete at your own pace from the comfort of your home. You can update this program as needed with no add-ons or surprise fees. You can secure all of your important information in this virtual password protected safety deposit box with easy to use services and client support system available. Please call me today at 706-366-5520. Again, call me today at 706-366-5520. I hope to hear from you soon.